Hey, oh, sports fans, this is Bob Hansen from Bob, Bob's Tabletop Sports. Uh, we are here today to review Downey Games Player of the Game Tennis. So if you're familiar, familiar with uh, Downey Games uh, and the Player of the Game series, a lot of what I'm going to show you today is going to be very familiar to you. Um, if you haven't uh, played any of these games, this will be something that will give you kind of an idea as to how some of the other games in that series play. That said, um, it does say like in the rules and in, I think in their advertising material for the game online, it does say that this is based off of a previous design that they purchased. Um, but like I said, it's very similar to their other games. I don't know if they purchased that whole stable of games. I'm not sure. Um, Downy Day, Games typically doesn't give you a lot of information as to um, what their games are about. Uh, they don't give pictures or anything. So that's why it's good to have these kind of reviews. There was no reviews of this at all that I could find on YouTube or anywhere. So I thought this would be a good chance for me to put something out there that could help other gamers uh, make a decision on this game. This is the hard copy of the game, by the way. Um, you can get this on um, in a uh, print to play version, essentially a PDF. Uh, where you print out all the materials yourself. Uh, the printed version is really nice, actually. I'm very impressed with the quality uh, of materials that they give you. Uh, first of all, uh, full color. And if you can see here, this really is nice, where they have uh, this nice little um, plastic envelope that the whole thing comes in. So it's really cool. So let's take a look at this and open this up. Let's see what you get. You can see here we got some rules and stuff. We got some cards in here. Um, there's some charts and other things in there too. Um, let's put some of this aside here. I'm gonna put the plastic cover away here for a moment. All right. So you can see here. Here's the rules. Full color. Um, and uh, it's it's really nice. Like I said, you have here some colors here, and and so this camera has a lot of problems focusing on itself so it's gonna give me some errors here with that but you can kind of see here where it's uh, real good at describing the different things that are in there so those are the rules here and we'll kind of go through the rules here in a bit as to how to how to play this game but um rules we have um remember this in a second what's nice you are uh, they have some special cards here if you're playing like uh, just kind of unrated players. Um, There's some ratings here that you can use for that. Uh, they give you a ton of score sheets. So you can see these score sheets here. Uh, we'll put one of these aside right now for use uh, later on as we go through some of the rules of that. Interesting thing here. They have, I think they make this assumption that uh, gamers don't have dice, okay? Oh, actually, hang on before we go through that. Also, they have some brackets too, which is really nice. So if you're doing like a, um, down. So if you're doing a tournament or whatever, you can a tennis tournament with 32 players. You can you can set that up pretty easily. Um, but I think they make this assumption that gamers don't own 10-sided dice, which is kind of weird because they give you these. Uh, random number sheets. Basically, you're going to select uh, a number on here for tens and for ones or whatever, and you kind of go from there. And um, you start at one place and then you just kind of work your way down. So uh, I prefer using dice. So you know, we just you know bring out a percentile dice, and that's all you really need. Okay. We have that. Uh, other than that, we also have these. This is the charts for the game. Basically, this is only pretty much ever used if you roll double zeros on anything and then a special thing happens. So that's a special results chart or whatever that, that gets used for the game. Um, and I just put the other thing away that I was going to show you all, I think. Yeah, here it's at the bottom here. The other thing that this comes with, this is really interesting. So you can buy like sets for different tennis eras or whatever, or like uh, years. Like, so you could you know, buy the 92. See, I don't think actually they don't offer the 92 one because that was one I wanted to look at getting. 
Um, but uh, it was like, you know, the, the 2001 season or whatever, or 2002 season, you get those, right? Or 2019 season. So um, you can do those. But uh, you, this game actually comes with fictional players that you can do. Uh, there's about 33 or 34 of each women and men. So there's a fictional tour. It's called the Downey Games Women's Tour and the Downey Games Men's Tour. They even give you a nice little schedule that you can use for that. Uh, and this camera is just freaking out today. Um, and then also it gives you a nice little thing here about how to run it. And, you know, talking about, you know, what, how to do prize money for it, what kind of tournaments you have, and, and depending on that, and like how to run a blind draw event versus, say, a regular event, and how do those get seeded and what have you. Um, so that's really cool. Um, so it's kind of a nice little plus that they add in there. So um, also, they have these player cards in here, which are really neat. Okay, so let's take a look at a typical player card. So the, the, the players themselves are going to be rated on several different criteria here, okay? So if we're looking at this player card here, and we'll just maybe make sure its focus is in here. So we have a clay rating, a grass rating, and a hard rating. They specific, specifically say in the rules that uh, many years they play on carpet sometimes uh, to consider carpet as hard, okay? Uh, otherwise, uh, they have the number of matches played. The actual player cards, like if you get an actual set, this will be a record that they have for number of wins and losses they have uh, for matches, I think it is, on that surface, okay? Um, this first number then, um, so what, if, if you're playing on clay or whatever, you're going to record these numbers on the score sheet. And so let's say you're playing clay, um, if you roll this on your first roll, this two or below, you would win that for that game instantly. Okay. Um, then you have a first and a second. So if you roll under the 66 or under, um, your first serve goes through. Otherwise, 99 or below, your second serve goes through. Okay. You want your first serve to go through because it's usually harder to return for most players. And then these are your return numbers. So 54 or under, this player would return it and win the game. Um, and 66 or below on return two, they would return and win the game. So they're actually better. This is a rare player that's actually better on that second return, okay? Um, now here's the, the cool thing about this is that, or actually they're, uh, this isn't rare, sorry, that's the way it should be, 66. That's supposed to be an easier return, so that's that is a higher number. Sorry, um, and then th these two numbers then are modified by that player's serve numbers here. Okay, so for example, this 54 now becomes a 56. Okay, for our whatever it is. So like let's say he, let's say she's playing Jerry Renault. Okay. So Jerry Renault, let's say, uh, let's say this number here, 31, would be adjusted to a 33. This 42 would be adjusted to 43, uh, 42 to 43, based on that. Okay, where this is a minus, so this actually would be subtracted. So like this would be a 52 versus a 64. Okay. Um, all right. So. And the way this works then is that you can just you know, choose a couple of opponents. And what we're going to do is we're going to write in here. And this camera is freaking out here. Okay. So we can write in Jerry. Renault. And I can't spell very well here. And... Um, Carmela Mace. We write in the win number. So let's say they're playing on clay. So eight for win number for Jerry here, and then a two for Carla. And then we have uh, first serve for her is 36 for Jerry. 
and for it's 99 always going to be 99 for a second one and then for the other one it's 66. so a lot better service by carmella and then the ratings here 31 plus 2 is 33 and uh 42 plus 1 is 43 and then we do the same thing here, 31 and 30, uh, sorry, thir uh, sorry, 54 minus 252, and 66 minus 2 is 64, okay? So now we have this all set, all right? So we have all our numbers in there, we're ready to go. Now we just have to roll some dice. So we'll assume that Jerry gets the first uh, game, she gets to serve first, okay? So when she serves, we're gonna roll two dice. We rolled a 58, okay? So that number is not under that 36, right? So she's going to get the second serve is gonna be the result here. So Carmela to return and win, the, uh, win that game, she would have to roll a 64 under to return. So she's going to roll that. She rolled an 87, so she failed, and that means that Jerry held that first man, uh, first game and gets the win. Okay, so now we go down to Carmella. Carmella now gets the next serve, and this is really bothering me that it's upside down. It's probably bugging everybody that Kristen Edler is upside down. So 03, oh, only one away from the automatic win because her automatic win is two. So... Uh, instead, she's going to get first serve because it's under the 66. And now Jerry has to roll, roll under a 33. 33 or under because it's the first serve. And she fails. And Carmela also holds for the first game. And we go back and forth. Now Jerry will go again. 53. Uh, 53 would be a... Um, second service because it's uh, over the 36. Oh, and Carmela uh, will steal this one because she rolled a 0 1, which means that she successfully returned. And so she wins that second game. Okay. Now, you'll notice here the numbers are 99 or under. Hundreds, uh, 0 0 is basically 100. Okay. If you roll it on that first roll, zero, zero, and, and a zero here, that's basically a special result, okay? So that's where this chart comes in to play. So first you're gonna roll this event locator, and this thing is freaking out again. There we go. No, you're gonna freak out today like you just wanna freak out. Okay, why are we doing this? It's not doing very well in focusing today, okay. So we'd roll the die. Uh, I'm sorry, we roll the regular die here. So one, you can see here location is favorite, and then we would look at the favorite chart here, and then roll again. And we roll a two, and it says uh, first return equals plus ten minus ten, um, and so you know this is a effect that's going to take place for two games. Okay, this thing's just having all sorts of trouble focusing in on that. So anyway, so that's kind of how that works. It's real simple. D10s for everything pretty much, and that's all you have to do. We go through a game, you use the standard tennis rules to go through a game, and this is really going nuts on the um, focusing. Um, but anywho, anybody has any tips on focusing a web camera like this? Uh, I would highly appreciate it. Other than that, that is it. This is uh, the real basics of uh, Downey Games Player of the Game Tennis. And like I said, if you played some of the other Player of the Game games, you'll notice that kind of um, same kind of thing where there's some ratings that you have and some ratings will subtract or add to the opponents. And then that's kind of how it works. And then you kind of do a few die rolls here and there. So very simple to play. Uh, the game takes uh, each like full match uh, takes about five ten minutes to play out, uh, depending on how long it goes. 
Uh, I've had some games that get pretty pretty advanced. I actually moved all of this to a spreadsheet already uh, and play off a spreadsheet. But this kind of gives you an idea uh, as to how this play games and if you might be interested in the game. So that is all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you excuse the video. Um, but that is all we have for today. Thank you for watching and have a very nice day.